Check, check, check. Just testing to make sure. Getting a thumbs up. Okay, great. Okay, great. I'm just saying it seems like whatever uh, whatever sequence there was, like I think always I'm wondering why I can't yeah, always I explain it. it. You know, I'm going to be I guess that well, the state is zero. And all of the variations that I've seen, the very, you know, the variation in the measurement. Yeah. Some of them, and you know, the things also the non pattern part. Great, because two is the measurement, also the fluids, and some of the times we have a different outcome. You can read it. You can read it. No, right, I think that's right. So that's the main Yeah. The main difference the is how the effects of the 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 all right. I'll be able to make it. I mean, these huge parts. Even does to extract the this house and whether it's Oh, okay. That's completely different. I hear it. I was in a different window on this. Oh, good. You want to come take a look at it here and see if it's got. All right. I'll think about that. So I have it in presenter mode right here. It has your slides. Do you need a a mirror, or is that fine? No, this is good. As long as this works, good. Yeah. Uh, let me I'm start good. this up. Um, so this is what everybody sees. Just a heads up. So if you pace outside of this window, so you have okay, basically okay. here and over. I can adjust it. Can I go all the way? Yeah, you can go. Oh, hello. Yeah, good to see you. Hey, have have one. Thank you. This is great. <laughs> No, should I wear it for the for the call? if you if you wish? <laughs> oh, hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Okay. Give me one more. Try right to do a slide. But sometimes we put it back and it should be good. All right. Yeah. Oh, Oh, that's like one of the top wearing the Yeah, we're very far on the side, and um, a lot of us like you know, place on the airport to 
the results of it I didn't understand. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be happy that we're gonna yeah. find the right time. Oh, yeah, we gotta, yeah, we gotta, yeah, we gotta, 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 we I mean, it's like I mean, I just want to like that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to <laughs> yeah, we should start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should we start? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, it's officially start time, so let's officially start. Uh, so it's uh, a very great pleasure to have uh, Professor Elad Hazan uh, from uh, Princeton here. Uh, he has done seminal work in many different fields. Uh, I, I should definitely obviously mention he was the co-inventor of Adagrad, which is you know maybe the most impactful optimization paper on how machine learning is how machine learning models are trained. Uh, he's had, you know, he's also won the Bell Labs Prize. Uh, he's been a professor at Princeton since 2015. And he is also the director and founder of the Google AI Lab in Princeton. So, you know, I, I'm very excited to hear what he has to say. And so without further ado. Thank you, Sujay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me in the back? Is that OK? Yeah, so my name is Elad Khazan. I'm from Princeton. I'll talk about the uh, work with my student, Shinichen. Chen. Um, pleasure to be here. Uh, I always love visiting Austin. Um, I'll be talking about some work that we have done in the area of optimization and how it relates to control. I just had a great chat with the two faculty members here about what are the important problems in optimization these days. So I'll say something about what I think are the important problems, maybe more questions than answers. Oh, one more thing I want to say. So I love when there are questions from the audience. Please feel free. Uh, interrupt me anytime. In fact, I have an encouragement. So you see this, this is a book here I have. And that's a free book to whoever asks the best question. Um, so the motivation for what I want to talk about comes from choosing. It's something that we encounter in practice. Everyone here who trains deep learning models LLMs or whatever uh, your favorite deep learning problem is, knows that these algorithms, the optimization algorithms, differ very widely on how they perform. So that's what these two plots show. Over here we have uh, four different architectures and two different test and validation. Um, and then we see there is a huge variance in how these methods perform. And it's not the case that there is one single algorithm that performs best in every single scenario. Um, and the bottom plot shows the same algorithm. I think this is Adam. And it has different uh, learning rate. And again, you see huge, huge variation in how the algorithm performs. So bottom line is that I don't expect, I don't think there is, and I wouldn't expect there to be one single optimization algorithm that is the best choice for even a task of training a deep neural network. Not to mention other tasks, like, you know, maybe you want to have some, whatever, convex optimization. But even from this particular task, it's not the case that you have a single algorithm that's best and not the case, and the hyperparameters are also very wide. Okay. So I hope people are on board with me on that, because that's kind of the question I want to address. How do we pick the best algorithm for the task that we want to train? 
So in the bottom image, you use different training tasks? That, that it's, the same task. it's the same task, same data set, and same algorithm. But it's one not... scalar hyperparameter changes. Ah, okay. Yeah. Hyper, a hyperparameter. Hyperparameter. Okay. So I would treat it like, you know, yeah, different uh, algorithm with hyperparameter is basically like you have different algorithms. How would you know how to set this hyperparameter? It's not like something that changes very mildly. It's a huge change. Any other concern about this plot? Okay, so it, there has been a ton of work on this question, as you can imagine. And there are very various approaches. Some of them have to do with adaptive gradient methods. So Jai said I worked on undergrad and Adam came out of later and so on. So these are widely studied. There are other uh, methods. Um, they don't yet, they don't do what I want because they all have hyperparameters and they all differ widely. One method which I particularly want to address is called this meta gradient or hyper gradient descent. That's a method for saying we have these hyperparameters. How about we tune them by doing local search, by gradient descent on that hyperparameter? Okay, like I have a learning rate. How about we do hyper gradient descent? Um, that, as I will show, doesn't work in theory and also not in practice because the problem is not convex. So even if you have a convex objective, the learning rate might behave non-convex as a function uh, of the objective of minimizing the loss, okay? So in short, these are all great approaches. Some of them I worked on myself, but they don't have global guarantees of the type that I want to achieve. So let me say for a minute, why is the problem hard? Or try to convince you why is the problem hard? By the way, does this end at 1 or one fifteen? How much time do I have? It's I mean, one. You, can go, you can go a little over 1 if you want. I'm waiting for the barbecue. I'll, I'll end at 1. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, we want, here is the problem that I want to address, and I want to convince you it's a hard problem. And here I'm only talking about the scalar learning rate for now. But I will make it much more general, like a matrix. Eta can be a matrix. But let's say even if one eta is, is a scalar, right? So I want to minimize the given function f after t iterations. What is the best eta I can choose if I commit to having this kind of simple gradient update rule? So let's open it up, right, what it means. If I open it up, the last iterate is first one minus eta gradient at that point, x1, minus eta gradient at, you know, this, the, the rest of them and so on. And I have this eta coming in every single step of the way and it recurses. And I get a very complicated expression here, right? So what is x2? x2 is x1 minus eta gradient. And x3 is also that and so on. It's a recursive complicated expression. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, I have a question. Please. Uh, why, are, uh, why are you fitting only on the learning rate when we, it is widely known that in large scale optimization, uh, there is also an interplay between learning rate and the batch size? So, like, why are, yeah. why are you only interested in. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> the reason I'm doing that is because I want to convince you the problem is hard. I'm not going to. So, convincing the problem is hard. I only take the simplest possible setting. I show that already is hard. You want batch size, even more complicated, right? It's even harder. But there's interplay between yeah, yeah, of course. Batch size, and, you know, maybe I have a preconditional and the momentum, it's even harder. So, I'm saying if you can't even solve that, how do you expect me to solve the problem I started off with? Okay. It's a toy setting to explain that. It's yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So far, you're the winner of the, the book, but I'm sure you'll have tougher <laughs> questions for me, okay? <laughs> Okay, so you guys are convinced this is a hard problem, even if I have a scalar, yeah? <laughs> it's not a simple thing. That's why hypergradient descent fails. It's a very complicated polynomial, or not even polynomial, some complicated function, yeah? I mean, if it's quadratic, it's polynomial. If it's quadratic, it's polynomial, but a high degree polynomial. Yeah. High degree polynomial. Yeah. The degree is going to be the t, yeah. the number of iterations. So how do you solve that? Is not convex, even if the cubic is not convex, yeah. Okay. So yeah, very complicated thing. Now, but I, I still want to ask this question. How can we efficiently learn the best optimizer with global guarantees? And for it's okay if you don't uh, know too much optimization, momentum, batch size, preconditioner, blah, blah, blah. There are many parameters. Think about this problem I just talked about. Even this learning rate is hard, okay? How do I even do that? 
I will, and in fact, think of it as a matrix. That's maybe a more indicative thing that's happening here. How do I do that? Okay, so how can I do it provably? And so far, there is no, there was no known method for doing it provably. What does it mean for Ada to be a matrix? Hmm. Is that syntactically? Um, yeah, syntactically. So replace eta by a matrix. This is called preconditioned gradient descent. So if eta is a matrix. Oh, all right. I take the, yeah, yeah. that factor and right. I find fine. Right. Yeah. I mean, the most common methods actually fall into that kind of category. I see. Where eta is a diagonal matrix. Mm -hmm. And then you have a learning rate for each coordinate separate. I see. Yeah. I see. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Scott is the winner now. Okay. So, mm -hmm. okay. So the answer is going to be yes. Uh, I can do it, and we can do it, and it's going to be done by uh, some some different point of view coming from dynamical systems, from control of dynamical system. So we're going to think of the optimization process not as one shot gradient descent kind of curve, but I'm doing it many times because in one shot it's going to be too hard. Uh, so I'm going to allow myself several trials, and I'm going to learn it as as we go along. So I'm going to going to observe. We're going to run the gradient descent. We're going to observe some things, then change the control, we'll run it again, and so on. And I'm going to prove to you that in the long run, I will convert to the best parameters, even though at one shot it's hard. Okay. And I think this is a good idea. I mean, so it's a good idea in practice, I believe, that you can, you don't want to run a hyperparameter sweep on millions of parameters. You want to maybe learn from the data what's the best hour. But a lot, certainly there are hardness results for this kind of generic setting that you're talking about. So, uh -huh. good. Um, yeah. It turns out there are many non convex problems for which it's true. To learn the proper eta, it's going to be empty hard, like Adam is saying. But I can do some improper relaxation, compete with it in polynomial time. So, this is a bit too fast of a question for me now, but that's we're going to overcome it actually. Okay. And by learning, because you can do improper learning, you can, you can still do it even though the proper problem is hard. Okay, so there's no kind of reduction from cryptography or something? No, 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 this is solvable. We're gonna solve it. I see. Yeah. Maybe not in the optimal way, but it's gonna be learnable. Okay. So, oh, it's kind of still a bit bad. Um, here is what, how I'm gonna kind of build it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about control now, because that's gonna be the technique we're gonna to use to solve the problem. And, and talk a little bit online control, how to formulate optimization as control, and finally show how it plugs back into the problem I started off with. So this uh, topic of control, I know many of you are electrical engineers. I knew nothing about it uh, about five years ago, but it's a very fascinating field. And it's very related to optimization. Even the name of some algorithms who have an optimization, I've been doing optimization all my life. But even some of the names come from control. For example, heavy ball method. Have you heard heavy ball method, right? It's some kind of physical phenomena, which I had no idea about, but it turns out it's a fascinating topic. And many of the intuitions in optimization come from physics, come from, from dynamical systems. So um, this field of control, it's a subfield of engineering where mathematical field that we try to control some, some engineering apparatus um, and, and make it um, achieve the desired functionality we want. Okay, so here is, for example, a dynamical system of a pendulum. It uh, has this uh, point where it's fixed to the ceiling and the ball is moving. Um, and we all know the laws of uh, mechanics, you know, Newton mechanics. Maybe this is a large scale, no quantum physics or anything. Um, and so we can compute, you know, what happens to the ball and see. You can ask also a question about the dynamic system. How long will it keep on running back and forth? Where will it, when will it converge? Where will it converge? Is there an equilibrium to the dynamic system? These are all extremely well studied. Um, and they're hard. I mean, you can kind of analyze the laws of motion and so on, but it's a tricky thing. Uh, Leo Panov was uh, maybe the founder of control theory. So he had this idea. Let's look at some potential function. So not analyze all these equations and look at the ball, what's happening and so on. Let's look at the global property. This global property in the case of the of this dynamical system is gonna be the energy. And the energy dissipates if you have friction. The place of lowest energy is this kind of bottom here. So that's where the ball is going to go. And using, you can make one of these calculations and see when this is gonna happen, how quickly it's gonna happen and so on. 
This is called the Upanov's direct method. Okay, so taking a potential function and arguing about it. And how does it relate to optimization? So uh, actually, it, it's very closely related. The way people analyze even gradient method is to look at some potential function. For example, one common thing is the Euclidean norm squared of the current point to the optimum, right? So all of you know that, right? You can look at that. And there are other, you can look at other uh, sort of regularization functions and so on. The family of things you can look at. But this is some kind of energy function. Um, and looking at this energy of gradient descent of this potential function, you can analyze what will happen, where it will converge to, how quickly, and so on. So this was done quite a bit. Uh, Lassar, Detal, and others have all sorts of papers about very interesting papers uh, that use this method to analyze convergence of gradient descent. Um, this has an issue that it doesn't propose a new method, okay? It's kind of analyzing an existing method. Um, plus, somehow everything is known about these gradient descent methods anyways. That's not what I'm gonna use. But this was the standard of way of analyzing optimization algorithms using control. There is another method that Leopanov uh, suggested. It's called indirect method. So he said the following, I might have some complicated nonlinear dynamics. This nonlinear dynamics, I can linearize by taking the local Jacobians at every time. And now I can try to analyze the linear system that arises. What's good about this method is when you have a linear system, it's much better understood. We can say much more stronger things about it. It's much easier to analyze. Um, but this has not been used in optimization so far. And my claim is it has not been used because there is this field now that is very popular in machine learning. You will go to a machine learning conference, ICML, NURBS, CORT, and so on, see a lot of papers about online control. And this has only been kind of developed in the last five years or so, and it allows the use of um, a, a robustness to knowledge and all sorts of properties here that are very important. So that, I'll talk about that. That's, why, that's how I motivate the online control I'm gonna talk about next. Any questions so far? Okay, so I'm gonna use this kind of method to analyze optimization and I motivated it, this viewpoint, to look at online control. What is control? So here is a control problem that we studied during COVID. And this is to give you some kind of intuition of what the problem we're tackling here. This is a problem of uh, controlling a medical ventilator. Medical ventilator is what people would hook up during COVID to help them breathe or any sedated patient, even if sedated during any operation, and uh, even some, some routine things. Everyone, I hope none of you go to an operation. Any operation you have to go to, you are put under sleep and the body cannot breathe on its own. You have to be connected to some device that help you breathe efficiently. This is called a medical ventilator. Um, and the, the way this works is, so there is an, it's a very simple control. You need to insert air into the lungs of the patient. You get to measure the air pressure. So it's a one dimensional control and measurement. And the goal is to track healthy breathing as the clinician prescribed, some kind of waveform, like this kind of dotted line. Your goal is that this blue line here will follow this, this uh, dotted line. Okay, so I'm not talking about uh, optimization. I kind of shifted to online control. I'm explaining what I'm gonna do and I'll explain the, the setting and then the results in this area. Um, I wanted to kind of think about this problem now for a minute, okay, for a few slides. Here is the mathematical formulation of the problem. We have a dynamical system that is given by mapping F, and it maps the state, one state to the next. The state can be the pressure on the lungs, for example. The control is usually denoted by variable U. That is how much air we put into the lung. And then there is a noise W, some perturbation. Usually it's, it's uh, modeled by some stochastic zero main random variable. So the system changes according to this um, dynamics. 
Our goal is to minimize the sum of costs. For example, maybe we want to minimize the distance from the pressure, target pressure on the lung to the um, of the, the clinician prescribed tar target pressure to the actual pressure. Okay, that's how mathematically I would model the problem that I just described. Is that okay? Have people still seen this kind of modeling before, seen this problem before? Cool. So Lyapunov said I can linearize the function by the, taking the Jacobians with respect to the, to the state and the control. So I can think of this as a linear dynamics, and this is fine as long as I have smooth dynamics, which is very common, that's fine. And now my question to you is, if I know the system, what is the system is the dynamics? If I know the dynamics, I know these matrices A and B. And I know the target and the cost, I know what I need to achieve. Can I find the optimal controls? Can I find the optimal sequence of use that will minimize the cost? So what is the answer? Is there some dynamic programming method? There is, yeah. So um efficient, but you could. you could start from the very end, kind of go back and so on. Uh, notice I didn't say efficient, so if you don't efficient, just try all possible controls, you know, then you can. Yeah, but I did yeah. say dynamic programming, yeah. so yeah. which would probably correct. be more efficient. Correct, correct. The network is very relevant here, that's true. It's one of, one of the most common methods. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it is basically a mathematical stochastic optimization problem. So I just know it's a stochastic variable, I know A and B, I know the C, fine. I can maybe solve it, maybe it's not efficient, but it can be solved. If I know the horizon, I do know the horizon, I can do the dynamic program like, like Scott suggested. Cool. So this is this is kind of classical control. Here is an example that is very common in uh, it's kind of textbook. I think this is the most fundamental result in, in optimal control, at least. It's called LQR, linear quadratic regulator. This is a special case of what I talked about, where the system is linear like this, and the functions are convex quadratics. Um, and then turns out what Scott said is exactly true. So you can do, you can run dynamic programming from the very end, and you can find a solution to this problem efficiently. This is very unique for this particular problem. You can do it efficiently. The way to see it is that the value function is a quadratic in the state and the control. Because of that, you can take the derivative and solve a linear system of equations, find the solution, it turns out the optimal policy, the optimal control, is a linear function of the state, which is not true in general, right? It's like this is a special case, special thing. So the optimal is like this. Um, yeah, this is known since the 60s by Kalman. It's a beautiful result. It's taught, uh, I think this is kind of one of the first things you teach in, in control. At least I teach it when I teach control. I don't know how adults teach it. I think it's the first. I'm kind of new to the field. So it's a beautiful result. It's efficient. Um, now you can ask, well, this assumes that there is no noise or there is some stochastic noise. People ask, okay, maybe there is something, we don't know the noise ahead of time. I want to do something more robust. Uh, there is another field called robust control where you kind of compute the control subject to worst case noise. You don't know what noise is going to come. You do some kind of min max. Uh, this is very well studied, not very practical because it's very pessimistic. So the control that arise kind of assume very, very worst case behavior. Sir, what you put on the last slide, is that basically the Kalman filter? It's not a Kalman filter. A Kalman filter happens when you have partial observation. So ah. you cannot see the entire X. Ah. So you see some projection of X. Good. Good. Then you do the Kalman filter to recover some matrices that they put the A and the B and the C matrices. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, but it's it's very. This was developed at the same set of papers. I said, I yeah. Said, yeah. yeah, very related. Thanks. Beautiful theory. Yeah. 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 Um, now, here is the question that, that machine learning community people asked, and that's kind of very natural for me and for some Adam and you know people in the audience. What do we do? When we don't know the costs, we don't know the system, we don't know the noise, there can be arbitrary noise, and the, the loss functions are maybe more general convex, they're not quadratic. This thing was only for quadratic that I could take the derivative and it's linear, it's very special, but it, the whole thing breaks down otherwise. What do we do then? Um, and if you want a realistic example of where this would be used, here is a kind of an example that I give. Let's say you want to fly a drone 
from source to destination, but um, you don't know the weather, okay? The weather is the perturbation, and it's not a random variable. It's some complicated thing that's not zero mean. So you would like to have optimal control if the weather is beautiful and robust if it's very, very defensive, if it's very rainy or you know cloudy or whatever, but you want instance optimal. You want to do that without knowing ahead of time what the weather is going to look like. So when you look in hindsight, you flew the drone in the optimal way. Does this make sense? I'll, I'll have, let it sink for a minute. People, I don't know if, if people have seen online control. People have seen on, online control here? Know what I'm talking about? It's a relatively new kind of field. Okay. So you assuming you have like the visibility at that time when you're making decisions. Yeah, uh, the visibility of the state. Yeah. Yes, and the cost. Correct. And so far, even the system, maybe even I know the system. Yeah. So these things have been extended widely, you know, partial observation, unknown system, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Is online control anything different than online learning on the space of policies? Ah, wonderful. Um, okay, so online control, let me define what it is, then I will answer a question. Okay, so, so what is online control? It's like this. So I have a dynamic system, could be known, could be unknown, unknown, and I play the control, see the loss. Play control, see the loss. That's like online learning. What is my goal? My goal is to minimize regret compared to what? Compared to the best policy, like Ariane said, actually. Compared to the best policy. Now, here is the difference compared to just online learning. What I want to compete in with, so I have a sum of costs, and I compete with the sum of costs of the best policy. The best policy would have reached other states, right? So this is harder than just vanilla online learning that you don't have a state. The difference be between what, so this book about online learning is talking about and many other books, they are talking about where you don't have a state. You have a function, you play something, you see the function, you play something else, you see the function. Here there is a state, and this state is very important because that determines the cost. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It is an online MDP, but MDP, um, it, it's it's exactly like online MDP. So um, basically, the control and, and reinforcement learning are equivalent. Okay. Right. We want to re minimize regret in an online MDP with unknown cost functions. Okay. In general, this is a very hard problem to do online MDP. It cannot nothing can be done. But this particular case of dynamics, I can show you some interesting stuff. So by regret, you mean like the, the, the difference between what you get and, and what you would have gotten if you knew what, if you knew all the future uh, costs uh, and the perturbations. Ah, thank you. Yeah. So the unknown here is the cost is the cost functions and the perturbations. Got it. Yeah. Uh, then there's no assumption on the perturbation. Bounded. Bounded. Yeah, but not stochastic. Not stochastic. Yeah. Yeah, good questions. Any other? Um, so how, how exactly is this different from just reinforcement learning on MDPs? It's the same thing. The, so control and reinforcement learning are the same thing. Here's the problem with reinforcement learning. We don't have, and I, I am a machine learning person, right? The problem is when you have a Markov decision process, in my opinion, it's not a good model because you don't have any structure in your transition matrix. Now, we know that when we fly a drone or we move a robot, we have the laws of physics. They tell us exactly what's going to happen. So I have all this very structured dynamics that I'm ignoring. When I talk about medical ventilation, drones, and so on, I have dynamics with me. That's why I talk about control. If you talk about AlphaGo and so on, that's not control. That's reinforcement learning, and it's a very different situation. It's much harder. Okay, But I'm the, the methods I'm going to talk about I've, I only apply to this control dynamic situation. So it sounds like they're not the same. Or, or one, is one is more general. Yeah, one is more general. Uh, it's you know it, it only depends how you define this f, right? If this f is completely general, it maps any x to any point in Euclidean space to any other point with no continuity at all. It's the same. Right. But that's really not what we mean when we write I it see. down. I so, see. So, and, yeah. and the particular assumption you, that you want to make here is that F is linear or, or what? Or yeah, it's smooth. So it's, it's smooth. smooth. If it's smooth, it means it some, has some local structure. I can linearize it by yeah. the Lyapunov 
Maybe it's smooth. Yeah. It's smooth and it's known to you. Uh, yes. Okay. The known to you can be relaxed, but yeah. For now, smooth. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Not being a fact that the original problem of if I understood correctly of finding like optimal hyperparameters in a learning problem. Uh -huh. The eta, right? That's too hard for me to tell you right now how it will work. You can ask, but I, I will get to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just want to send it. Yeah. It's, it's, I think this will confuse the rest of the class here. I mean, <laughs> I can answer you, but I will get to it if that's okay with you. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Um, okay. Now the question is, which if I, I was not asking yeah. how, what's a good reference class of policies to compete against, right? I'm doing control. What's a good reference class? Now, I talked about LQR, Kalman's LQR model. For him, the best class was linear policies. They're optimal. For robust control, also turns out to be optimal. So linear is pretty good. So we can think about linear policies for, for this lecture. I think that's a fine thing to think about. What we can actually compete against is a much larger class. But what I cannot compete against is all possible controls. That's impossible. Okay, just too large of a thing to compete against because the class of all possible controls grows with time exponentially. So from a regret perspective, it's impossible to do. Okay, so it's kind of to recap. The, the, this kind of thing, if you think about online control, is the best thing determined, can I compute it ahead of time? No, cannot. As opposed to classical control where you can compute something ahead of time, here you cannot. The best thing depends on the sequence that was actually unrevealed, okay? That's the kind of fundamental difference. Okay, so here is a fundamental, uh, you know, the basic result in this area, uh, which is about five years old now. It can be done. So that's kind of, I think, a surprising and powerful thing. If there is an efficient algorithm that can achieve the best cost with the class of linear policies or even more general than that, has room to regret, it's a gradient-based method, very efficient, very simple, and has the implication. This is a much stronger result than optimal or robust control in the sense that you can compete for whatever sequence of noise that happened, you compete with them, asymptotically optimal. So whether it was bad, whether it was good, okay, fine. You compete with that particular sequence. And, and this is your result, right? Correct. I, I will show it, yeah. So what do you ask about C here? C, a uh, convex. Convex and the leaf sheets. Yeah. So gradient bound with that. Classic uh, on a learn. Very mild. It's very mild. It applies much more broadly than could write. So, yeah, this is a result uh, coming from this one came from our group. The Namana Garwal was the, the main student on that paper. Okay. So, let me show you how this is done. And I think this will illustrate what Adam was asking in the beginning. Why can we overcome kind of the hardness? Or why did it take so long for this online control thing to come up even at all? Okay. So here, here is why. And this has a very similar structure to what I started off with. Maybe this is the most important slide. So if I have a linear controller K that maps the state to the action, how would it look like if I enroll? So XT is what? XT is A, I'm now assuming kind of the fixed system for simplicity of the notation. So A X T is A times X T minus one plus B times U T minus one plus W. Then X T minus one is also A times X T minus two, blah, 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 blah. So this thing can be unrolled, unfolded. This is a very similar situation to the initial optimization problem with the quadratic, right? Very similar situation. That's what, that's the connection here. So I have a, a, some exponential in the past noises, past perturbations. <clears throat> And as a function of k, this is a highly non-convex and NP-hard thing, in fact, to compute the best k in general. But to answer Adam's question, I think so far is leading. So what is the, how can we overcome it? Simple thing, just replace, this is what we do in learning all the time. We replace this complicated matrix by some other matrix, we call it M, Mi. And now we kind of remove the constraints that it has to be exponential in k. I remove it. Okay, and I can learn the M, and there is no constraint on M. So I can learn a linear function of the past perturbations. Any question? So with respect to like feedback control, this is like having a feedback, but 
for the whole history? Yes, feedback for the, and, and in terms of the, the perturbations are linearly connected to the states, but that transformation is very complex. So that's why we only look at the perturbations of the states. This is kind of a key thing. So this is perturbation feedback control as opposed to state action control, state feedback. And you assume that this noise is correlated or? No, 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 arbitrary. This, this, this fact here is completely true no matter what sequence you have, right? It doesn't assume anything about this deterministic statement here. Yeah? What assumptions allow us to make K independent of time? Well, if this is not, this is by assumption of what I, it's not an assumption, it's what I compete with. Let's say I want to compete with the best fixed K, looks like that. If I want to compete with something that changes with time, it's going to look very different. But I can still do this uh, very similar relaxation. Do you have to bound the quality of the relaxation? Uh, yeah. I have to bound. There are all sorts of things that need to be bound. That I'll do in the slide. Yeah. But but if, for example, now, forget the boundedness, this thing is just always true, right? There's no issue here at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I understand is we have some K, and then in a simple setting, we take the, the i-th orders of k, and then we say that we can actually represent it with a linear operator. Correct. So do we assume something restrictive on k, or like what sort of assumptions do we need on k and c to make sure this is actually doable? Yeah. No, no assumption at all. I just, I mean, the bounds of this matrix n will depend on how large a and b and k are. But otherwise, there is no, this, this is always true that the set of all vectors that are a plus bk to the i, those are M1, M2, M2. This is a larger set of vectors, right? It's, yeah. large. it's like a feature extension. Yeah, feature, yeah. Some uh, kernel, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. This, this is very common in machine learning, right? It's convex relaxation. So you're going to impose constraints on MI later? So, uh, I don't think it's actually needed, but some kind of boundedness. That's the only thing that maybe you can impose. Yeah. So, uh, question. Yeah. Right. So, A and B are not something in your. You know, you're not free to choose. That. You're not. They are the system. They come from the pendulum or whatever ventilator. Right. Yeah. So uh, if this thing is convex in M, will it not be also convex in K if when A and B are fixed? No. So, okay, good question. So the cost, so the cost is convex in X and U. Okay. Right. Now, if X and U, they are linear functions of M, just by what I showed you. So therefore, convex of linear is convex. Great. But... U is a polynomial in K, and convex of polynomial is not convex. It's some weird thing. I don't know what it is. It's not. It's not convex, right? Oh, so, so M is not a single matrix. No, no. It's a sequence of matrix. It's a sequence of single matrix. matrix. Okay, right, right. Then yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's M subscript I, not M raised to I. M subscript I. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, this is just. It's not a power of anything. It's yeah. not a power. Yeah. No power. Different matrices. Do you okay. place any constraint on M I so that you can run to a value K? It has to be the M. Okay, let me show this in the illustration. Okay, so this kind of a star here represents the non convex set coming from K. Now, if K is can be small, big, bigger, bigger, these are bigger, bigger stars, right? They encompass more. The ovals are the set of M matrices. And when I take them to be bigger and bigger and bigger, they encapsulate the stars. But they are nice and convex, they are not non convex. Okay. So of course the, the magnitudes have to hold, and in theory you need it to be large enough to encompass the K. In practice, you don't you never take something too large. You know, it's not, it's just not needed. Yeah. So what are you throwing in this sense? The the Frobenius norm of the matrices M. The and how big they can be. <laughs> yeah, but the M I equals to K times some power matrix. How some eight ice power ratio. Okay, so, what does equal mean? For representation, it has to be equal. If I want to capture the exact same controller, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. But bigger than equal to is enough. I just need to say that it contains that controller. I don't need to find the exact controller, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Maybe I should say it like this. Um, okay, so, here, here is another, let me say it like this. Okay, I'm just gonna make it simple for everyone. Lasso, you all know lasso, right? You learn sparse regression, okay? All the sparse vectors, that's a non that's a convex non-convex problem, right? But you can make an L1 relaxation, that's fine, right? It's even bigger. Capture all the sparse vectors. That's the same thing happening here. Yeah, so are you actually calculating your K at the end of the time? No, or... no, no, no. Never I never get back the K because that's NP how. Okay. Good. So 
Okay. So, one... Sorry, sorry, one more question. So in the sparse recovery example that you sparse uh, optimization problem example that you gave. So there are guarantees which show that this L1 relaxation is actually equivalent to L0 uh, the L0. under some statistical. Yeah. So here, like, do you have something like that? No. Because, okay. No. Because then it's like, yeah, it's not like immediately clear whether the two are equal. I suspect you could probably do it. Mm -hmm. I personally don't find it important. I mean, I just care about the learning aspect, not recovery. I want to learn as good as the best something, but if I recover the actual linear or not, who cares? It's a, it's a hard thing. You know, in general, I don't expect it to hold because there are worst case examples where it's hard. Under some statistical assumptions, you might be able to recover, but it's not like sparse learning. You really want to recover. What are the factors for the gene expression or whatever? Here, I just want to control the pendulum. Right, uh, there's nothing special about her using it linear or non-linear. Yeah, I just no, want to control the thing. So the reason I asked is like as Yang was yeah. pointing out, right? like it should kind of fall within this like class of like the mi should be of like of the form of k times a plus b k raised to i, right? Or that is also not necessary. No, not necessarily at all. No, it's just for a presentation power. It's bigger. <clears throat> okay. Good. Mentioned that your resulting policy is not a linear policy. It's not a linear policy. Yeah, but definitely it's, not. But it's, it's pretty competing against linear policy. Exactly. It's stronger than linear policy. Stronger than linear. Stronger than linear. That's the thing. Okay. So because it's stronger than linear, that's why I get the result. But it's not okay. linear. No, but is it competitive in this stronger class? Yes. Oh. Yeah. That's the that's the I had a slide about it before, but I I don't want to get into it. I want to get back to the learning. We don't care about pendulums, right? We care about learning neural nets. So I want to get back to the neural nets. <laughs> Okay, so um, I just have one one super quick question. But yeah. is the the approximation that you get is it multiplicative or additive? Additive. Oh, yeah. So um, yeah, there is another thing. So there is something called stability in control. It's very important. You don't want your system to explode and the, the control to become exponentially large. So you have to assume that, and if you assume that, you can show that you don't need to actually to learn all parameters going back all the way to the beginning of time. It suffice to learn something like log one over epsilon matrices and they capture everything up to additive epsilon. So that's per Adam's question. And then there are some more technical details that I'm skipping. Good. So here is the algorithm. Uh, it's a very simple algorithm for control, not optimization. This is an algorithm for control. You always choose the control to be a linear function of the fast h, h is some parameter, and noises. Then you play that, then you observe the state, then you compute the new noise. How do you know the noise? Well, you just take the next state minus the dynamics of the previous state and control. And then you do gradient descent on the sequence. This is here is set of matrices M. You do gradient descent on, on them. So this is online gradient descent. That's the algorithm that appears here. It's the most basic algorithm in online learning. And that is why it gets a root T regret bound. Is regret ever not root T? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. 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 What else could it be? There, there are situations. Can be logarithmic. No, logarithmic. Yeah, it can be logarithmic. Um, for bandit problems, it can be t to the two thirds. But right. it's like there is there is some kind of phase transition. It cannot be arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But root is very common in statistics in the grid. Yeah. Okay. So this is the this is kind of a basic result in control online control. This is the the most basic result that I'm going to use. So there is a simple algorithm. That's how it. That's I wrote it here. You can code it up. This is what the guarantee is. It's a strong guarantee. And now let's use it for training deep neural nets. And I only have five minutes. That's going to be enough. OK, so let me get back to, oh, I should say this is very, has been used in control and many applications and so on. It's kind of a thriving subfield of ML now. OK, so the question I started off with, can we efficiently learn the best optimizer with global guarantees? That's what I wanted to get to, because what we really care about is training the GPT-4, right? That's what we really care about. <laughs> so how do we do that? OK, I'm going to formulate my training problem as a sequence of optimization pro of optimization problems. Every time I start from the same point, optimize, 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 optimize. Start from the same point, optimize, optimize. We call it meta-optimization. Meta they have n episodes. Each one of them has t rounds. <laughs> And what we'd like, the goal that we would like to achieve is to have regret, regret meaning sum of costs, to be comparable to the sum of costs of the best algorithm, optimization algorithm in a certain class. This optimization algorithm, for example, can be the best learning rate in gradient descent, 
matrix learning rate, momentum, preconditional, a lot of things. So that's what we want to achieve. Why is this a good idea? Because regret implies generalization error. That's somehow a very good, that's kind of what we should shoot for, generalization error, not training error. Okay. So this is a good objective to have. Okay, so, okay. so it's one hyperparent at a time. So it's not a it's not a set of parents that it can optimize on its No, of set, set, set of hyperparents. Set. This A thing, this pi, I will tell you in a minute what it is. Mm -hmm. It uh, captures a lot of parameters, not only one. But these are like mutually explicit. They could may may not be collision between them. Like, no, no, no uh, yeah, no, can be no, no assumption, no assumption at all. So, how can I cast this thing as a dynamical system? My state is going to be the past points, past weights of the neural net, the past gradients, and the cost are going to be the cost function, the loss. Of, of an example, let's say, I pick an example at random, a word from the sequence, and that gives the cross entropy loss. Okay. That's gonna be a loss. And the dynamical system comes from the equations of gradient descent, generalized gradient descent. So gradient descent has a dynamical equation, xt plus one is one minus zero times xt minus gradient, and a gradient. Um, for a smooth function, the gradient also changes according to the Hessian, the second derivative times the difference in two points. These simple equations can be rewritten in a dynamical system by state again being the points and the gradients. They multiply this thing with the Hessians, add some control, and there is a noise correction here that changes between the iteration, iteration t and t plus one, correct for that. Okay, so what this slide shows you is that I can write the optimization problem of gradient descent as a dynamical system, linear dynamical system. Okay. By doing that, what can I achieve? So, oh, I should say, I'm going to compete with the best linear controller for this dynamical system, just that, like I did before. What is a linear controller? It's a linear function of the state. Linear, the state contains the points in the gradients. So linear function of that is a very general class. It captures weight decay, preconditional, learning rate, a bunch of things, high dimensional things. And I can compete by the by, by what I just said. I can run the meta optimization algorithm on the noises using this kind of control and compete, have a regret bound com compared to this best comparator class of algorithms of linear functions on the state. In the sense of sum of losses is going to be comparable to the sum of losses that would have occurred had I used a different algorithm, okay? But your point is that the linear policies capture a lot of these tricks that people use. Yes, <laughs> they capture, yeah. Definitely the learning rate I started off with, which is non-convex, but also much more broad, right? Weight decay, preconditional, and so on, yeah. Also, also, you can see that I'm using an improper algorithm here. I'm, I'm using the, some linear function of path gradients at different points, and that's what overcomes the non-convex issue. Yeah. Uh, the size of them though is like quite big, right? Oh, very big, yes, great point, great point. It is great, uh, dimension by dimension. So in theory, look, we started with an NP hard problem and we get to N a polynomial time solution. That's already very nice. In practice, what you want to do is have diagonal matrices. Then it doesn't blow up. Yeah, good point. Sorry, one, one more question. So in the beginning, you kind of started with like the last iterate conversion, right? but here the guarantee for like the average. Iterate. Average, because that captures generalization error, which I think is very important. Yeah. Okay, let me hold off on questions a little bit because I'm about to finish and I don't want to run out of time. So, but I'm done basically. So what what <laughs> what is the guarantee we get? Using this online control method that I described, that's exactly the algorithm I spelled out here and a, a kind of adapting the same algorithm. And um, if we have a convex quadratic function, we get meta regret that behaves like this. And if it's a cloud class, we get some other bounds that are also, bottom line, these things on average, when, when n goes to infinity, go to zero. So on average, you get convergence to the best algorithm in hindsight. That's the bottom line. And this implies competition with the best algorithm from a large class of algorithms Gradient descent with any learning rate can be matrix learning rate, can do momentum, weight decay, various things. Okay, good. So I can throw in more hyperparameters if I want, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. And the, the nice thing, it, it scales polynomially. It scales, but it's still scale. It doesn't scale yeah. linearly with it? Or? Uh, so, yeah, what this guy was saying. So, the um, this M is a matrix. So, it's the number front of the number front of. Yeah, yeah. So, it's quadratic. Yeah. But, but yeah. you can make it yeah. diagonal, then it's linear. Yeah. But yeah. there must be some condition on how the hyperparameter is allowed to affect the algorithm. They have to be linear in the past, in the state. Linear in the state. And uh, by the state that I, the way I gave it, it's some kind of like, mm -hmm. it's, it has all points, previous points, and ah, previous gradients. I see. So it's, it is a gradient right. method. I see. Okay, be, because without yeah. that, this would just be a completely arbitrary optimization problem. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And if you do the linear, the diagonal, then you still say anything about competing with these best Yeah, uh, good question. Um, more tricky. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit answer here, but let me first wrap up. That's a good question. Okay, so um, yeah, we ran it, or I should say Shini ran it. And what you can see in some of these experiments, so we kind of have a competition in Google of doing these auto training methods. So the blue line is our method. In the beginning, it's kind of the same as everyone else, but as you go more and more and more, it becomes much better. It kind of trains much faster to the, gets much faster to the minimal. And this is consistent in various architectures and problems, even these are non-convex, even these are neural nets. So even though theory holds for convex, in practice holds for non-convex. Um, and then I just like to summarize. So uh, yeah, I talked about the setting of episodic optimization and why naive hyperparameter optimization is hard. It's, it's non-convex. And I talked about control. We kind of talked about Lyapunov's method, direct and indirect, um, and how online control is somehow a new tool in this area that can give different kind of bounds. And they're important for what I want to do because they can capture arbitrary noise. The noise is the gradients. They are not stochastic. The gradients are some adversarial thing that happens in the neural net. It's very important to use online control here. That's why I think it was not used. Um, yeah, and I gave you some theoretical bounds. If you want to learn more about control, there is a, a, a textbook draft that we put with Karen Singh uh, from CMU. Yeah, so thank you. I'll end up now. Right. Uh, we had maybe one or two questions, but uh, uh, this guy asked me your name, John. I you I think you're also the winner of the book. I, I mean, I'm not going to give it to a professor. I'm going to give it to a student. Oh, I'm a professor. Oh, you're a professor. <laughs> this professor gets it. Okay, fine. You look very young. So yeah, the matrix is M. He's an assistant. Okay, that counts. So yeah, the, the diagonal matrices for the theory to hold, you'll need A plus BK to be diagonal. So that's when you get the theory. Otherwise it doesn't really, doesn't naively hold. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I think you meet up why is your loss of a step size? So is that also a hyperparameter parameter not to choose? Oh, for the meta algorithm? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> that, that's also true, yeah. I mean, it's just that, it's kind of a less sensitive to that that parameter. That's the that's my my kind so of. You answer. reduce all the parameters to just one. Number. Yeah, that's another way to view it. Yeah, and it's very unsensitive to that, you know. And you kind of know in advance what you need to set it to, and so on. So, and it's, uh, it's even if you don't have the tight bound there, it still converges to zero, right? That's all I need. The average width converges. That's all I need. Average width converges to zero. Yeah. Um, so, from what I understood, you have an optimization problem, and you construct like a dynamical. Like system problem. Yes. And you hope like solving that problem uh gives helps you solving like the optimization problem. Correct. Um my question is given that you now construct this dynamic system, it may have solution points which are just like or equivalent points which are just like equivalent points to the dynamic system, but don't help help you but are not actually solutions of the original problem that you yeah, that's true. I, that's a feature. That's not a bug. So by having, I move to a larger space of optimization algorithms, and I can say this, the performance of these algorithms, because that's what I measure, and the main regret, is going to be better than any of the proper algorithms I started off with. Yeah. Good point. So is, is the hypergradient yeah. somehow a special case of your algorithm when you are applying no, uh, size and there are no states? No, no, it's no. it's like it's like a linear controller, you know. It's not convex, so it, it is captured by what we're doing, but it's not clear that we're ever going to reach it because it's like recovering the k from the matrix. No, no, I'm saying the hypergradient descent, obviously. 
uh, that would so they are applying gradient descent to only one parameter oh, okay. it's that it's captured only when you have when the, the, the theory will not hold for this particular case because sure. because the history is too short it's a history of one uh, yes yes that's so that the theory doesn't hold for that yeah so it is a special case but whenever there's no theory for that and which is consistent okay thank you folks i'll take all other questions offline thank you <laughs> Well, yeah. 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 So the state is a combination of yeah. what, what exactly is the state again in this case? For states are the points 